It's not one of those kind of jackets that are, you know, mass produced or whatever. This is all handmade. And again, I'll hang it up on a hanger here and, and let you see some of the detail on it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the homestead, the mud puddle. What a gorgeous sunrise, wasn't that? Yeah, I got very lucky uh, to capture that this morning. It only lasted about 45 seconds the way it looked. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this morning was 23 degrees outside, guys. The low last night was 23, which isn't that bad because we've been in the single digits for the last few days. So 23 didn't seem that cold at all. But what a beautiful sunrise. I hope you enjoyed it. Today's talk, folks, is going to be about my buckskin jacket, and uh, I've worn this jacket probably in two or three of my videos. It's a beautiful jacket, guys, and I've gotten quite a few emails, actually. I mean, I don't, I don't get very much correspondence with, uh, with my subscribers, but I have gotten uh, quite a few emails um, inquiring about my buckskin jacket. I have it right here. And like I said, I've, I've shown it off in a couple of videos, you know, I've been wearing it. This is the jacket, guys. And, uh, you know, I'll set it up on a hanger to get uh, more detail on it here in a minute. But yeah, I've been asked about this quite a bit, guys. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history on it, what I know about it and what I don't know about it. And uh, first of all, no, I didn't make this jacket, guys. That's uh, the, the very first question I get is if I made this jacket. I didn't. I wish I had the talent to do something like this, guys. This is a beautiful jacket. I've had it for about 15 years, give or take, probably even a little bit more than that. And I bought it on an online auction. Uh, according to the seller, uh, according to the description, it belonged to his uncle, all right, who has since passed. His uncle uh, was born and raised, if I remember correctly, in South Dakota. And he worked for most of his life on a sheep ranch, all right? And this actually came with uh, sheepskin that kind of goes over your shoulders for colder climate. And I'll show that, uh, I'll show that to you in a second here. But yeah, th th that's the information that I got from it, guys. And according to the seller, again, his uh, uncle had passed away and somehow he ended up with it. I don't know if he inherited, inherited this jacket or just, like I said, somehow ended up with it. But it sat in his closet for 10 years after he picked it up from his, uh, from his uncle. He said he never wore it. It just hung in his closet for 10 years. So that's why he decided to, you know, just get rid of it. And I am very fortunate to have picked this up, guys. Um, you know, I paid uh, quite a bit for it. I'm not going to say how much, but it is a beautiful jacket. And it is obviously handmade, hand-stitched, everything, guys. It's not one of those kind of jackets that are, you know, mass-produced or whatever. This is all handmade. And again, I'll hang it up on a hanger here and, and let you see some of the detail on it. There is some dye work along the sleeves here. You can see that. All right. I don't know what type of dye that is, but that dye has not faded for the 15 years that I've had this jacket. And I've worn it outside a lot, guys. Sometimes I go out in public with this and I get a lot of thumbs up. I get a lot of questions about it. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't have the answers. All I know, like I said, is it came from an individual who lived in South Dakota. I believe that is a Sioux country as far as Native Americans. I could be wrong. But if anyone out there has any information on this type of stuff, please let me know, guys. I want to learn more about this. Um, it's a beautiful jacket. Again, it's handmade, hand-stitched, lots of detail on it. And I love it, guys. And the only reason why I'm talking about it is because I've gotten quite a bit of questions on this jacket via email. And I wish I could say I made this. If I, if I could make something like this, guys, I could be making a lot of money, I think. So again, I'm going to hang it up on a uh, hanger here and let you see some of the detail. And while I'm here, guys, since I've got this, I just noticed this is all in my background, my ceiling. I've been asked a lot about my ceiling as well. Uh, a lot of folks think that this is my roof. This is not the roof, guys, all right? This is not the roof. This is all cosmetic up here. Uh, there is drywall behind this. 
insulation, framework, whatever, and eventually uh, the roof is on top of this. And this is all just for cosmetic, guys. Uh, my wife took, uh, we bought these panels. These are brand new panels. If you were to take these off the ceiling and look on the other side, these are brand new panels, guys. What my wife did, she, uh, she set these all down on the ground and she sprayed muriatic acid over these panels. And then she sprayed hydrogen peroxide and it instantly rusts, guys. Check this out. It just rusts. You know, right before your eyes, you'll see it rust. And it's pretty amazing. And this is the look that we wanted. We wanted kind of the old rustic you know, old rusted panel look, whatever. So that's why we did this, guys. And it runs across the entire house. It is a small house, 800 square feet. I know I've said this before, but it runs across the entire house, uh, in the bedroom, the bathroom, everything. And we like the look, and that's why we did it. Anyway, guys, that's the answer to that. This is not our roof, once again. You know, this, we have insulation above this cosmetic ceiling and everything else above that, including, you know, the roof, the metal roof, which was another project that we did. One of the earlier projects was, was the uh, the metal roof. Anyway, guys, back to my jacket. I'm going to hang it up, guys, and, and, and show you some of the detail here. Again, if anyone has any information, any insight on this sort of thing, let me know. This is part of my Mount Man outfit. I think I've worn my coyote hat uh, before on a video or two. And this is part of, like I said, my Mount Man outfit, which I've kind of built on for quite a few years guys probably even decades you know and maybe one of these days i'll get in full gear my mountain man outfit now that i i'm sporting a beard i think it has a better effect but uh yeah this is something that i've always been interested in guys ever since high school it was a whole mountain man era uh, the early 1800s here in the united states the whole westward expansion uh you know all the trailblazers and things like that and um, you know all the native american tribes things like that. It's, I've always had an interest in it, and I think that's why I ended up where I'm at. Anyway, guys, I'm going to hang this up and uh, so you can check it out. All right, guys, here it is. I have it hanging up on the, uh, the door here on a hanger. It's got bells on it. Looks like brass bells. I hope you can see that, guys. Let me see if I can turn this light on. That'll help. Nope, doesn't make any difference. Anyway, it's got bells on it, brass bells. Here's a smaller one. Uh, these buttons look like they're made out of bone. And the jacket itself is, is fairly long. It goes down below my knees when, I, when I'm wearing it. And you can tell it's been used. Stains and things like that. But here's the sleeve. And I don't know, these look like bone as well. Beads. You can see how long the fringe hangs on it. A lot of little decorations, you know. Looks like uh, maybe an antler tip here. Uh, this definitely is an antler tip. Uh, I don't know, some sort of paw. I don't know if it's a rabbit. And you can see all the 22 shells that go along the entire jacket, front and back. Here's another antler tip. Really cool jacket, guys. And look, inside it came with a little pocket. It has a little pocket in here. And when I bought it, this was in it. A little, an old matchbox. There's, I think, five matches in here. And I've always kept it in the pocket. So that was a free little gift that came with the jacket. The back side of it, all the fringe, you can see the fringe. Very long. You can see the 22 shells. Very well done, guys. And obviously very uh, Native American looking. Whatever type of dye this is, as I said earlier, it, it, it hasn't worn out, it hasn't faded. It's very cool. Here's a little brass button of some sort. You can see the patchwork. This is what it looks like on the other side.
all these little holes and imperfections have all been patched. Here's a smaller one on top by the shoulder area. And again, this came with a sheepskin and it actually attaches somehow with these leather straps here. It attaches to the top here. You know, if it's cold outside, you put that over your, your shoulders and it hangs down at least halfway down the back. Helps keep you warm. Here's the other sleeve. Again, I don't know if... This is a foot, I believe. Not sure what that is, maybe another rabbit foot. More bells. You can see how long it is. And if you go back and maybe find one of my other videos, I think three or four videos ago I, I wore it outside. I was talking about my neighbor passing away. So if you haven't seen it, guys, go back and watch that video. I'm actually wearing this jacket. But I do get a lot of questions, and, and I wish, like I said, I wish I had the talent to do something like this. But if anyone out there has any info, please let me know, guys. You know, I'd really like to, you know, I know it's authentic. I know it's real. I know it wasn't mass produced. I know it's one of a kind. It has to be one of a kind. And I just wish I knew more history about it. You know, I don't know how old it is. But uh, the uncle, like I said, had died already. And this gentleman had it in his closet for 10 years after receiving the jacket. And he says he remembers it since he was a little kid, his uncle wearing it. And his uncle also had a Civil War hat, he said. And he wanted, he, he wanted me to buy that as well. And I wish I would have, guys, because it was probably an authentic hat. From the civil war era um but obviously he wanted money for it and i you know now that i look back i wish i, I would have purchased this particular hat as well because i wouldn't doubt it if it was uh, authentic you know an authentic thing from the civil war anyway folks that's today's video thanks for joining thanks for watching guys uh, if you have any questions or any comments about this jacket please let me know other than that, take care of yourselves, stay warm, take care of your families, and we will talk to you next time.